Hi, I'm Trisha Friedman, and I wanted to share a short little look at a strategy that I've been exploring this summer. Uh, to find out more about some of the ways that we are playing with AI literacy, you can head to shiftingschools.com and check out some of our free guides. Um, now, those of you who follow me on LinkedIn, you've maybe seen throughout the summer as I've been making my weekly journey to the library, which I love to do, I've been taking a little bit of a photo of my weekly book haul and playing around with a few different prompts in ChatGPT. So you can see this is the selection of books I just picked up. Thank you, Ottawa Public Library, for being so amazing. And here is the prompt that I put in. I said, you are an expert in future forecasting, interdisciplinary thinking, and you have a passion for science fiction. Based on the six texts presented here, draft a syllabus for a course that will be taught in the year 2035. You got to include all six of the tick texts. The assessments should be employing technologies you imagine will exist in 2035. They shouldn't exist today. This course is part of a communications program, so design it accordingly, also weaving in possible scenarios for what a comms major would need to know in the future. And I should say that this prompt was actually inspired by two different people. One of them I had the joy and luxury of speaking with today, Dr. Fornaciari, who is an incredible scholar who does a lot of work on social media as well as communications. And our interview will be a part of the Shifting Schools AI in Higher Ed and Accessibility, accessibility Series that starts this September. And this guest had me thinking about uh, the work that she's doing around communications right now and the incredible shift that a lot of the coursework and the engagements are undergoing as the result of generative AI. And we talk a lot about how, as an educator, when you immerse yourself in the technology, you understand how to balance understanding the things that we need to be concerned, worried about, advocating for and against, as well as understanding where the real opportunities are at. And what I loved about that conversation is we kept coming back to what it means to prioritize and center the human with the technology. The other person who's inspired this prompt is the incredible Amy Webb. Uh, if you follow me on LinkedIn, again, I'm kind of talking about her work all the time as well. She's a futurist. If you've never come across her work, pause the video, uh, get a hold of those books, or watch her most recent South by Southwest talk. I love this quote from A.B. Webb. She says, great futurists focus on the future and present simultaneously. And that has me thinking about how we might model that mindset and invite our students in to practice having that mindset. So again, given that prompt that I used with the six books that I checked out, you can see here is the basic course description that it generated. So interesting that it, it does a pretty decent job of looking into the themes in those books. Uh, the course objectives are kind of interesting, but I'm really fascinated when it gets into sort of the more slightly specific breakdown on how the reading can lead to a discussion and might be assessed. This specific assessment that was inspired by the book, How to Find a Four-Leaf Clover, says students will use an AI-driven empathy simulator to create communication strategies tailored for neurodiverse audiences, an AI-driven empathy simulator. Here's where I feel like we've got a great idea of leveraging a technology like generative AI to do a little bit of the predictive work and be looking at, okay, a great future forecaster is actually looking at today's trends. They're looking at what's happening today in order to make those predictions. It's not purely science fiction. It's based in doing that research and looking at that data. How might I invite my students in to look at, well, what is happening today? What has been happening in the past few years that could lead to an AI-driven empathy simulator? What do we have right now that's close to that? How close is it? Um, and then kind of, I think, imagining a future where we would want an AI-driven empathy simulator, what ethical dilemmas would the creators of a tool like that need to have had? What legal parameters would we want society to set? Um, again, I think here's where we can get into some really interesting human-based conversations. Another example, week six, is going to look at misinformation and manipulation based on the book, Invisible Rulers. 
The assessment is for students to use a deep fake detection and counter propaganda toolkit to design a campaign that counters misinformation in digital media. What do we have today that is kind of like a counter propaganda toolkit? What would be included? I think that could be a fascinating discussion. And uh, uh, one more example I want to point to based on the book Lunar Boy, develop a transmedia storytelling project using immersive AR and lunar holography to map the future of childhood communication. To map the future of childhood communication. So I was really fascinated by that one. And I asked it to break that assessment down a little bit further, um, which you can do. So I, I thought this detail was sort of interesting that it would ask the students to consider using ambient digital environments that were no longer limited to screens in the year 2035. So I wanted to share this example with you because um, folks who are watching who are in higher ed, I know you're hard at work on um, you know, getting that syllabi work already. It might be interesting to just sort of look at what are the texts that you're using and invite a tool like ChatGPT to do some of that future forecasting. Um, how would some of those texts intersect? What would the assessment be? Those of us who already have our books set, um, how are these books looking at the future while looking at the current day? And is it useful for us to be using this technology to help us to imagine potential futures or not? This has just been a short and sweet experiment that I've been working on. Um, and I know it sounds kind of simplistic, but by playing with my reading in this way, I have really just enjoyed, you know, this the sheer curiosity of my reading. Can the tool of generative AI add something to the reading that I'm already doing? For me, it's been a really great summer of experimenting with that. And I feel like it also has me thinking about where this technology might be going. Might I have sort of um, an AI companion reader to nudge my thinking about books? Uh, you Again, if you've seen some of my previous posts, I've asked it to help me do a better job of linking texts that might not seem at the surface level linked together. Uh, do I always find the result to be mind-blowing? No, I don't. But I would say that every time I have an experiment like this, it definitely gets me curious about other potential ways to experiment. So if you try this with your set of texts, we would love to hear from you. You can always reach out to Jeff and I at info at shiftingschools.com. That email address is over there in the comment section. Thanks for watching.